I'm standing here in Mallow Racecourse, behind me there one of the jumps, and in the background is the Sugar Company. However, this here is the greatest tourist attraction to have hit the town of Mallow in living memory. A seven million pounds executive jet, which with great panache was landed here by the Mexican Captain Ocana, putting into the shade such marvelous aviational feats as those of Biggles, Bader, and Wrongway Corrigan. In the merry month of May, just before the dawn of day, a plane flew in for Shannon to refuel. But when Shannon is fogged out, they are ordered right about to touch down in Cork Airport as a rule. That uh, morning uh, on uh, April 18, coming from uh, Shannon on bound to Cork, uh, the controller asked to me about our status in that moment, and uh, we said uh, we are coming very short of fuel. And uh, he he tell us, uh, you almost are flying over Malo. If uh, there is a race course in Malo, I uh, was here on my forecourt at approximately 8 a.m. And at about 10 past 8, I heard this aircraft, this low aircraft coming towards my premises. Uh, this was at my back here. Now, it veered to my right, took a short turning that direction, that's on my right here, and went towards the um, sugar company uh, factory. Uh, then it carried on towards Mallow for a short distance, and it veered sharply left. Now, at that stage, I was... Um, practically sure that it was going to land in the race course. We flew over the race course and I chose the north side of the race course for landing, so landing on the on the way to the west and uh, with a lot of fortune because the soft surface the stop the aircraft stopped in about uh, 400 meters. As he flew towards Mallow Town, his supply of fuel was down, but the pilot was as cool as cool could be. In a racetrack west of town, he made a safe touchdown just beside the Mallow Sugar factory. Good man. Oh, I think he was first class. He dropped in just over the Canberra Tower, just skinned in over it, and uh, dropped in and got between the, the uprights for the mile and a half stat and then the tail of the plane caught the cross wires. And uh, of course, it was only like a bit of thread, the whole thing collapsed. And when he hit the rail, the rail uh, went into small pieces and the uprights, then what we call the dolls for dolling, the, the, he just cut the tops off of those and put a foot off, clean off. I welcomed him to Mallow, as some other people did, but um, I heard at a later stage that Mallow, uh, M-A-L-R, was, uh, uh, how would I say, uh, an enemy in, in some other um, um, language. Uh, so, um, but I, I think since that I have discovered that Mallow is not an enemy and uh, they, I think they're enjoying themselves. Quickly, quickly, help him out of there. Oh, but I'm so lucky. I'm so delighted you have such a fine race course. I was in big trouble. <laughs> we were in big trouble if we hadn't the race course. <laughs> oh, mess amigos, I had only one minute's fuel left. Shannon Airport was closed and Cork Airport was too far away. And all the fields, I see plenty fields, but they were all full of cattle. I could not land, and then I see your lovely race course. Oh. Muchos gracias, señores. But how to get airborne again? There were three basic options. First, take off from the race course, but that was too wet. Next brainwave, dismantle the plane, reassemble it on a road and take off from there. County Council not too happy. Perhaps inspired by this drama group, the insurers Lloyds of London decided on the third alternative, flex the muscles, straighten the back and build your own runway.
Well, of course, as uh, most people know, we're involved in the in the uh, ground limestone stone and quarry business. In fact, our, we have uh, six quarries scattered throughout the country, and one of them is our Baddy Beg Quarry, which is located about eight miles from the site. So, of course, we are very anxious to get our products into 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 this site here. And uh, the sugar factory itself is overlooking the site, so I think this was the main reason we want to get involved. We haven't built runways before, but uh, we've done similar projects and quite a lot of projects, uh, capital program projects in our sugar factory. So we felt we were very well equipped and it being on our doorstep, so as to speak, if it had landed a few yards further over, it would have landed in the sugar factory, so uh, maybe just as well. Now, Jim, how confident are you that the first ever runway you make is actually going to work? Uh, we are very confident because uh, we have a team of uh, excellent engineers backing me here and I got top class backing all the time from Michael Godgen, our civil engineer, Jerome Gives, and John Joe Buckley, our foreman. And when we tendered for the job, uh, we surveyed the site, took soil investigations and we uh, made out our design, submitted our design to both Lloyds and Air Claims in the UK, who passed the design. Subsequently, it was passed by Gulfstream in Georgia, in America. Is there any chance at all now, tell me, that you might decide to tender for Knock Airport the way things are going? Well, I think Monsignor Horn may be in contact with us. If he is, we are open to invitations. Well said. <laughs> well, said. well, the main problem was the weather. Since we started here, the weather has been very, very bad. And it made the site very, very difficult to operate. But otherwise, no problems. So after he landed, what happened to Captain Reuben O'Connor? Well, he's here for four weeks, and whereas he hasn't yet begun to speak with a mellow accent, it is early days yet. He settled in comfortably here to the Central Hotel and towards the end of his day was delighted to see that the town itself was on fate for the annual Rakes of Mellow Festival. And how the town took to the bold captain. An overnight celebrity, Mallow embraced this breath of Latin exotica. Captain O'Connor found the full whirlwind of Mallow society to his liking, an unexpected windfall, a break from routine. He's even selected beauty queens. Tell me, you see a great man for the ladies. Did we hear that? We hear that, Alan. Is that yeah. right? <laughs> you don't know whether it's true or not, is it? No, no, no. It's all so talk. They think that you're a great man for the ladies. Is that true? I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> so it's only all rumour? Yeah, rumours. Ah, I see. Yeah. Well, we'd say that anyway. <laughs> I had the honour to, to go later on to the ballroom and... Uh, put the crown in his beautiful head and I have to kiss it because somebody asked to me kiss the queen and I do that and too o obedient <laughs> <laughs> the Irish people and the Mexican people I think have a lot in common we understand manana as well yes uh, really I don't know what, what is mañana for you exactly? But uh, I believe it's, it's uh, s something very uh, similar. In Mexico, for instance, mañana means mañana or the day after or 30 years later. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, let's say 30 days later, see? So this is where it's all going to happen when Captain Ruben O'Connor finally taxis his sleek £7 million aircraft along this runway before finally letting her take off where she belongs into the sky. But when is that going to happen, you might ask yourself. Well, there's an old mallow expression which says it all. Manana. <laughs>